Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live wall-to-wall -wall coverage from OpenStack Vancouver 2015. Gorgeous day here, looking out over Canada Place and the harbor here. Um, joining me for this segment are two newbies on theCUBE, um, but after they're done, they will be CUBE alums like everyone else. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Olson, Director of EMC OpenStack Services Portfolio, and Rags uh, Srinivas, who's the Developer Advocate at EMC. Uh, Rags, thanks for being our first hat on the show for the week. <laughs> uh, you know, we're here at OpenStack, so you know, beards and hats and you know, some good character um, you know, to do there. Not, not the corporate buttoned up show. Uh, got so, it, got so, it. so thanks. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of a geek, uh, yeah. you know, so I, I like to have my own personality, if you will, right? Um, I really wanted to be in, uh, you know, in sandals and all that, but, but I thought that would be a little bit too much. So I'm here, uh, glad to be here. Yeah, we, 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 we just had Brian Gallagher on and said, you know, there, there's no suit, it's jeans, a little t-shirt underneath. He said, kind of a geek. Most people here are waving their geek flags yeah, uh, at, at the show. So, so, what's, so, so what's interesting, I'll add one more thing is, so yeah. I've been on prep calls for, for the OpenStack Summit, and so we're going over casual, and, and, and they say it's basically jeans, like people walk around in flip-flops, and, and you know, EMC is EMC, and they're like, kidding me? They didn't really know how to react to that. Hey, hey. It's like, look, just you know, dress comfortable like you would on a Saturday or, or a casual Friday, you'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was, I was the other extreme in, uh, you know, in the previous summits. You know, uh, when I was not working for EMC, um, but but now I've dressed up a little bit. If, if, if you know, if you can. <laughs> you, you, you got the logo it. polo, which exactly. uh, you know I had many years uh, wearing those. I, I now go logo list, uh, being on the analyst side. So, Rags, t tell me a little bit. What's your role there? What brought you to EMC? Yeah, um, it's a good point. Um, you know, basically, I uh, work as a. I've been a developer for a long time, so I call myself a developer at heart. Um, you know. Development has, has completely changed, if you will now, um, and and this has happened, you know, not just overnight, but but you know, uh, open source uh, has obviously made a big impact on development, right? Uh, I remember I was working for a big enterprise company, um, you know, back in 2008, when uh, you know it, it, they had a, a decision of whether to go open source or not, and you know uh, they really wanted somebody a single throat to choke and all that, you know, things that they were kind of used to doing. Um, you know, in a typical enterprise, uh, which they didn't quite get that same, um, uh, you know, uh, comfort feel, if you will, with open source, right? So, so um, you know, we had to kind of talk to some of the vendors, uh, you know, uh, specifically at that time it was Cloudera, you know, who were not even offering HBase support at that time. So, um, you know, long story short, uh, we started with, you know, with open source quite some time back, and, and I think that's the evolution that we are seeing these days, right? You know, if you think about, for example, um, uh, OpenStack, right, because we're here, or if you think about Cloud Foundry on top of OpenStack, which makes development a lot easier, uh, it's, it's really all about open source. So what I do is kind of work with application developers, with uh, open source developers, um, and, and, and try to make it easy uh, you know, to kind of make this transition, if you will, because believe me, you know, there are a lot of advantages, but it's not easy either. All right, so Jeff, t tell us a little bit about your role, what brings you to the OpenStack Summit. So I'm part of our global services group in our cloud portfolio division, and I'm responsible for uh, creating service offerings specifically around OpenStack. So my background is purely OpenStack cloud technologies. Uh, previously I came from a competitor here who has a strong presence uh, and decided to take on the role at EMC of, of really not only just being in our services and creating service offerings around OpenStack, but also being an advocate for, uh, for OpenStack and really helping our organization understand what OpenStack is and, and how it can uh, work well with our federation and, and our partners as well. Yeah, so Jeff, maybe if I can jump off there. You know, Rags brought up a good point. You know, you talk about open source, customers want a single throat to choke. I mean, EMC is known for you know, great customer support. They sell solid products, hardware, software, services, put it together, but it's a little different when you kind of boil it up to kind of a platform discussion and open source is involved. How does EMC look at that? Surprisingly well. Um, I, I think initially it was, it was a lot of, of uh, a lot of, I wouldn't say pushback, but it was a lot of bit uh, trying to understand how we're going to do in this new world around software. Not everything's so relied on, on hardware. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
But the thing is, through our leadership, they embraced it. They basically, you know, said, look, you guys are all very smart people. We hired you for a reason. You know, give us a business case. And, and, and we have a lot of people who came from uh, other companies with open source backgrounds. And, uh, and it's really been embraced and really they've started to see the benefits of, of having open source technologies, you know, things like uh, Viper uh, Controller being, being uh, open source now Copperhead. Copperhead, yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, and many things to come, I think is, it has been a great uh, catalyst for the way that EMC is going. So, yeah, surprisingly it's, it's had a lot of good acceptance. Yeah, and, and, and also if you look at the federation uh, that EMC is, you know, like for example, Pivotal, uh, you know, Cloud Foundry has always been uh, open. Um, you know, they have Spring, which is, um, you know, open. Uh, developers have been using it for a long time. So, so uh, if you think of the family, I think open source has always been in the blood. Um, it's just that, you know, it's, it's becoming more relevant, uh, you know, in EMC as well. All right, so maybe we could speak a little bit of what are the challenges of customers coming to EMC for kind of professional services around OpenStack? So with OpenStack, the, the really it's a matter of the transformation. So I would say 95% are all very big VMware shops and they're saying, look, we, we, we recognize that there's this other platform, OpenStack out there, and, and our either top-down management saying, you know, we need to start developing third platform-based applications, uh, and, and we realize that OpenStack is basically the right infrastructure as a service layer for us to, to build those net new applications, but we, we really don't know how to, how to take the keys and, and drive it. Um, in some instances, some of them say, you know, we hired one or two DevOps guys, so we're DevOps, we're ready to go. And it's like, no, because you hired one or two DevOps specialists doesn't call you a DevOps shop. There's a whole transformation that goes into it. You know, and, and Randy's point yesterday, I mean, OpenStack is hard. You know, I think the deployment side of things is, I think that that case is, is closed, right? And it's now, well, how do we use it? How do we leverage it? to its full capacity, how can we provide value to the business? And that's really the, the, the big uh, driver for them coming to us is how can we leverage both a, a VMware environment, a Microsoft environment, our public cloud instances, whether Amazon or Rackspace public cloud, merge them all together so we have a seamless single pane, single control point to, to build these net new apps while making everyone who manages our infrastructure and the operators happy. Yeah, Rex, maybe could you speak a little bit about kind of the interaction between the customer and EMC? You know, how much do they have, does the customer need to, you know, go through transformation, hire new people? How much can EMC train them? How much does EMC do for them? Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's a great point. Um, you know, we, you know, I'm a, I'm a technologist primarily, but, but if I take my hat off, right, you know, uh, it's really not about technology, it's really about cultural change, right? Um, and, and the moment you start kind of embracing open source, uh, you kind of start looking at open source, um, you know, there is definitely a cultural shift that happens in the organization. I, I can attest to it because I was in the middle of that, uh, you know, when we kind of moved uh, into open source. So, so going back to your question about, you know, how EMC can help, um, you know, our, our, there, are product, uh, there are projects on EMC code at github.io, uh, you know, which essentially does deployment, you know, into multiple clouds. Because, you know, as much as you, uh, as OpenStack is kind of a, considered a de facto standard, if you will, right, there are still other clouds out there, right? You want to be able to deploy to those clouds as well. Not a lot to talk about that this week. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, we don't talk about that. But, but you know, how, how can you make that as pain, painless as possible? How can you make it less friction? And, and again, I like to look at it from the ground up, right? There are a lot of legacy applications out there, um, you know, written in Java, for instance, right? How do you kind of bring them into the new world, right? That's not an easy thing to do. Uh, you know, you cannot forklift and put it in there and make it, make it happen. Um, if you use an infrastructure like Spring, for instance, um, it makes it easier to adapt to the, um, you know, to the changes in the inf infrastructure as well. So, so I think what EMC code is, is, is trying to do here and EMC in general is trying to do is kind of enable this transition and, and it's happening from, from different points. And a, a big part of that transition is what we've done around DevOps. You know, if you go back two weeks ago to EMC world and you guys held you know, the DevOps, DevOps session on Sunday, I think what was the expected turnout, 25, and you had 400 or something like that? Exactly, it was, it was completely packed. Uh, it was an event, a half a day event, uh, which happened the same day as the biggest boxing event. And I think uh, I can easily say that um, 
you know, the DevOps event was probably better than the boxing event. Uh, you know, so, so it, was, it, it was really cool, um, you know, a lot of interaction there. And I myself was blown away by that. So thanks for bringing that up, sure. Jeff. Uh, I think it was, uh, you know, uh, we saw the energy there. Um, you know, different companies coming together and talking about DevOps as, as like cultural change and what can technology also do to help. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. I had a great conversation with Brian Gracely on theCUBE at EMC World and we, you know, trying to tease out, you know, what is this whole infrastructure as code? Because, you know, I, I'm an infrastructure guy and, you know, we, you know, start from, you know, your physical data center and you build up from there. Right. Um, so, you know, what, what pieces do customers own and what pieces, you know, don't they want to worry about anymore and how much does, you know, software go down the stack? We were, talking with uh, Brian Gallagher about that, you know, resiliency in the hardware versus resiliency in the application and the software. So, I mean, it's, it's changing and it, it, it's changing fast. Um, it, you know, maybe, Jeff, if you talk a little bit more, you know, how, how, you know, just the training that EMC offers to customers, you know, working with your partners, I mean, this, this transformation is, is pretty massive. So, Absolutely. you know, <laughs> how are we along that journey and what, what are the pieces EMC is doing to help? We're, we're moving along well. Um, you know, we're, there's, there's a two-fold kind of approach for, for, especially around OpenStack and this new paradigm in, in third platform apps that we're full steam ahead on. Um, but really, it's, it's number one, we're, we're uh, strongly getting our internal delivery team and professional services and, 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 and sales reps to be able to talk about this, this new type of applications, type of workloads at the same time we're leveraging partners like Canonical, Mirantis, and Red Hat, mm -hmm. who we've uh, certified reference architectures with based on EMC storage arrays, to say to customers, hey, we're not only in the, in the OpenStack space, but we want to make you successful. And whether you're using not just one distribution or maybe you want to pick one of the other partners, we'll be able to certify that our arrays are there, and from a professional services standpoint, we'll team up with those partners, and we'll make sure that your implementation and you, you being able to, to operate that cloud is, is a success, successful approach. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point, because I mean, EMC's got a long history of understanding where it fits in the stack, and of course, there's places you grow and expand, sure. and you know, Brian said out of, you know, what was it, 17,000 engineers, there's like 400 that are in software. I forget the top level number, it was 400 hardware. I mean, mm -hmm. software is where it's been, but EMC doing the partnerships. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about, you know, kind of your activities here at the show, um, you know, what's cool that EMC is helping with, who are you partnering with uh, at the event, uh, you know, highlights for you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So so, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, all of us are in the midst of is this kind of the like container revolution, right? You know, everything is containers. Um, so I'm, I'm a big proponent of, uh, you know, a platform. Not really, you know, containers has been around for a while, especially if you again go from the Java side of things, where, you know, servlet containers have been around for a while, um, and so on. So what, what I'm doing in this particular show is I'm, um, you know, talk, uh, doing a hands-on lab on Cloud Foundry and OpenStack. So install Cloud Foundry and OpenStack, you know, we're not going to get to that in the 90 minutes that we have, but I'll, I'll kind of quickly demo how you can use Bosch, and how the VMs are automatically resurrected if it goes down and things like that, right? So we also have, you know, additional training at EMC Core, just in case you cannot, you know, get to all this you know, in the summit. Uh, we did a couple of Docker hackathons, which were really very well attended. We're going to have some more of that. Uh, you know, probably the Cloud Foundry hands-on lab also, we're going to uh, repeat that. Uh, you know, Lattice, which is a new stripped down version of Cloud Foundry, right? You know, I think it's great for, for, you know, kind of kicking your tires on Cloud Foundry because it has kind of the same look and feel. So we will, yeah, we yeah, will definitely actually, be doing a lot of Would you speak a little, because Lattice ties into the containerization discussion that you had. A absolutely, Can, can yeah, you just give us a quick on that? Yeah, yeah, so, so the idea is that, you know, with build packs, which kind of Heroku, um, you know, um, pioneered, right? Uh, you, you, can, you can run different apps, uh, it kind of, falls through the different packs and figures out which one it is and runs it automatically for you, right? But, but you know, there are a lot of applications which are Dockerized now. So to be able to run Dockerized workloads and all that is, is critical. And so what we did, uh, you know, with Cloud Foundry was uh, kind of rewrote the runtime part, if you will, in, uh, in Go, and that's why it's called the Diego. Uh, and essentially what it does is, um, you know, be able to run these Dockerized workloads. Uh, so, you know, you, you just download your Dockerized uh, app from the public registry, and and you know you can scale it up. Uh, you can make it highly available. You know I wrote a very simple example where you know I kill a particular instance, and Lattice automatically restarts it for me. So as a developer, that's a great thing because you know I don't have to worry about how to make it highly available, how to make it scalable, how to connect to the logs, and so on and so forth. 
All right, Jeff, same thing for you. Uh, you know, big things this week from an EMC's perspective. Not as or, advanced as, yeah. as, as what Rags is going through, but uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of big things going on. Uh, we participated yesterday in a, a state of the, the panel, stack with, yeah, yeah. with a, a panel discussion with, with Randy Bice, which I thought went really good. Uh, we talked about you know where OpenStack is, where it's going to be going, and some of our insight. And, and I thought it went really well. I had some good feedback. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm meeting with customers. I'm, I'm talking with people in the booth, and really getting a sense of what they're looking for from at EMC around OpenStack. Mm -hmm. And uh, and surprisingly, I have a lot of people talking about how they love our open source strategy announcements as of as of late. And yeah. I think it's it's really positive. Uh, paying attention to a lot of sessions around uh, software defined networking. And, uh, and then the storage side of things as well. Yeah, so one of the big announcements this morning was talking about the community app catalog. Uh, anything from EMC, is that something kind of in the future? I know, you know at EMC where we talked about some of the open source projects that were going out. How, how does EMC play into kind of an app catalog? So, yeah, great. so I, I've been a huge fan advocate of the Murano project. Uh, part of Q1, we had extracurricular activities to do around our, our bonus. I actually contributed some code and blueprints up to the community around that. And, uh, and I really I really enjoy now it's seeing to progress and get some, a lot of traction from the community now brought into uh, the OpenStack community as an accepted project. Um, it is super important. I, I think especially around our hybrid cloud model where we want to have seamless self-service catalog uh, where you don't have to have that PhD to, to spin up resources in the cloud. Uh, OpenStack is going, it's that evolution and I think that, that Murano from that perspective is, is really trying to make that operating experience a lot easier. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to where it's going to go over the next several releases. Yeah, and, and it's particularly timely. Um, you know, I was at the Cloud Foundry Summit last week, and I'm here at the OpenStack Summit this week. There is a lot of synergy between the two, um, you know, because neither of them is, um, I can't, each of them depends on the other, let's put it that way, right? Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, if you, if you looked at the Murano catalog, one of the, one of the big things there was Cloud Foundry. Um, Cloud Foundry is a little bit hard to install, from a developer perspective, and that's why we created Lattice, right? Um, but Murano is going to make it a little bit easier, um, and 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 I'm sure we'll see a lot more effort um, of kind of, you know, adding some of these, you know, different um, pieces of software, if you will, uh, on OpenStack. I myself, you know, I attended the design summit at uh, Paris last uh, last year, and and one of the big pushes was you know, really infrastructure as a service is kind of boring to developers, how can we make it interesting, right? And I think Milano makes it interesting. Yeah, and yeah. boring at the same time because it's so easy to do it. Yeah, well that, that's actually one yeah. of the things we say coming out of this week is uh, if this becomes boring, that, that's good. Because that's good, it might yes. actually be mature more. Yeah. So, uh, last question for both of you. Look forward to Tokyo, look forward to Austin. Um, you know, what, what should we look to see from EMC? Um, or maybe just to, to take off your EMC hat a little bit, look back, you know, what do you want to see from the community uh, to kind of progress and move the ball forward. Yeah, so so again, I'm, I'm going to uh, reiterate the same thing that I talked about just now. I think uh, Cloud Foundry and, uh, and, and uh, OpenStack has a lot of synergy, but I think there's still a lot more to be done, you know, in the sense that, um, you know, why, why is Cloud Foundry a first-class citizen on OpenStack, for instance? Or why is OpenStack the best infrastructure with Cloud Foundry, you know? Those things, I think, need to be espoused a little bit more. Um, you know, we need to dig into, like, for example, a, a application marketplace, you know, which is, if you, if you think of Murano as kind of like, a, um, you know, a lot of infrastructure or application software available, maybe something on top of that, um, you know, being available in the Cloud Foundry marketplace, like, I, I have a uh, HR application, or I might have, you know, some other applications, and I'm able to connect them, uh, you know, a, based on a microservices approach or something like that. Might be a little too ambitious in the next six months, but, but I think if you get there, I think it'll be great. Uh, I would really love to see a lot of progress being made in upgrades. Uh, you know, I think from installation standpoint, my personal opinion, I, like I mentioned before, I, I think we can pr almost close the, the page or turn the page on that. Mm -hmm. And now we, I think the community really needs to start focusing on how can we go from different versions of OpenStack in a seamless, seamless manner without you know, potentially bringing down your entire production environment. So, yeah. I, I know we will get there, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where that's going to go next. Yeah, uh, great point there. I mean, yeah. I, I know from an EMC standpoint, non-disruptive upgrade, something that EMC worked out through most of their product mm -hmm. lines. Um, when I hear upgrade, I hear pain. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let, let's hope Absolutely. when we come back, uh, you know, once we get to Liberty and beyond, uh, you know, we, we will solve some of those problems. So, Jeff Olson, Rag Training Boss, really appreciate you coming on, sharing your experience there, uh, the developer community, and, and what's happening from kind of the global services standpoint. Uh, this is Stu Miniman with uh, this, the Cube, 
here at OpenStack Vancouver. Lots more coming through to you uh, from the beautiful venue. Tons going on at OpenStack. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>